Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A family mourning the death of a teenage girl who was killed in a violent crash downriver. That crash happening over the weekend, just weeks before she was set to graduate. Tonight, a memorial is growing at the intersection of West Road and Allen Road, where Jasmine Alachami lost her life. Pamela Osborne is there live tonight, and Pam, you talked to her family. We did, and they're wanting to know exactly what happened. But even in the rain today, friends and fellow classmates have been showing up to add to this growing memorial for Jasmine. As I mentioned, her family desperately wanting and needing to understand what happened. My niece should be picking out a prom dress right now. That's what she should be doing. Instead, flowers, messages, and a stuffed bear, part of a growing memorial for Jasmine Alhachami just as confused as everybody else. Her sister Summer trying to make sense of something that just doesn't. It was so unexpected. She wasn't, it's not like she was sick or she was right. dealing with was just... anything. It was just out of the blue. Saturday night, Woodhaven police were called to the scene of an accident at the intersection of Allen and West Roads. Jasmine was one of three passengers in a car traveling east on West Road when, according to police, the driver ran a red light and into the path of an SUV. The driver of the SUV remained on scene while the teens in the car were taken to the hospital. That's where Jasmine died of her injuries. Jasmine was a beautiful, beautiful person inside and out. She was uh, a 4.0 student at Southgate Anderson High School and ready to graduate. Summer says Jasmine wanted to study interior design and had hoped to attend college in New York. The things she could have accomplished if only she had the chance. If she had an opinion about something, she would make sure it was known. And she, if you didn't accept her for her, she, she knew her worth. And those sisters only a year apart, there are six siblings all together. As you can imagine, they're leaning on each other now more than ever. As for this accident, it's still under investigation. Police have yet to determine if drugs or alcohol was a factor in that crash. But we do know other teens from that car that were taken to the hospital did have to go into surgery for their injuries. The family, again, asking anyone who may have witnessed this crash to come forward to get in contact with them so they can try to figure out exactly what these last moments were. We posted their information as well as the information to a GoFundMe account to help with burial expenses on our website, clickondetroit.com. For now, reporting live in Woodhaven, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. Just incredibly difficult. Pam, we appreciate it. Well, the long-running fight over plans to build Troy's first mosque may soon be resolved. A Muslim group wants to convert a restaurant and banquet center into a mosque on Rochester Road near Waddles. The city said no, but a federal judge ruled Troy is in the wrong. Mara McDonald live in Troy tonight and Mac the city council with a decision to make here. They sure do, Jason. You know, they went into a closed session tonight to try and hash it out. As the mayor said to me, it's the first time that he, the council, and their attorneys would have a meeting to go over this decision and try and chart a path forward. The controversy surrounds this property on Rochester Road, which a Muslim group would like to turn into a mosque. The city of Troy turned down the group's zoning request. Now, after being sued by both the group and the Department of Justice, tonight a federal judge says the city used its zoning ordinances to bar Muslims from using the site and is in the wrong. This is the holy month of Ramadan, and we would hope that the city of Troy would agree to settle this case in which the federal courts already ruled against them. The question now is, will the city of Troy appeal to the federal appellate court or stand down. Next up is I-3, request for a closed session. Mayor Ethan Baker says he and his colleagues are going to listen to what the city's attorneys have to say and then determine next steps. Our former government doesn't allow us to, to have conversations, you know, behind the scenes, the Open Meetings Act, a Michigan statute prohibits us, so we really haven't had an opportunity to come together, speak as a group, um, discuss the issues, and talk to our council as well. Obviously, that's a big part of it. We, we have to have all the facts. Um, no decisions will be made in closed session, but we'll have some direction coming out of there, I suspect. Back here live, no vote or anything taken like that tonight. However, there is a settlement conference scheduled in this case for next week. So I think we're going to have a pretty good idea where Troy intends on going with this. 
probably by Monday. We're live in Troy tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, local four. And we'll be watching. All right, Mara, thanks. One of the biggest school districts in Metro Detroit is addressing a racist social media post circulating online. The Plymouth Canton District says it investigated a racist video with threatening content but did not elaborate. The district says the video was posted off school grounds but was addressed with the students involved. The district is asking parents to denounce acts of hate and is encouraging students to report them. It says it will unveil a new plan involving community forums to keep the conversation going. The driver is charged in the death of a 13-year-old boy. He was hit and killed crossing the street. Zaire Harris was hit by a car moments after he got off that school bus last week near the intersection of Healy and Nevada on Detroit's east side. Police say school bus driver Deborah White didn't activate the stop lights and stop signs so Zaire could cross safely. When he was hit, prosecutors say White drove off. Zaire's younger sister saw the entire thing. She didn't even see the car. He was flying so fast. She think it's her fault. But it's not her fault. It's the bus driver's fault. That bus driver is charged with second degree child abuse and failure to stop. She works for ABC Bus Company on Detroit's west side. The company did not want to comment today. A long running neighbor feud turns violent in Macomb County. Police responding to a shooting around 530 tonight in Roseville. It happened on Meyer Street, not far from Gratiot. Police say when they got to the scene, they found a 41 year old homeowner lying in the street with a gunshot wound. The 58 year old suspect immediately surrendered to police. The victim is now undergoing surgery, but is expected to be OK. Tonight, the U.S. Marshals want you to be on the lookout for a suspected child rapist with ties to several cities in Metro Detroit. Investigators say 31 year old Kevin Bailey raped a young girl for years. They say he would threaten physical violence or harm to her family if she told anybody about the abuse. Bailey has ties to Detroit, Ypsilanti, and Ann Arbor. If you know where he is, you can contact Crime Stoppers at numbers 1 800 Speak Up or call the Marshals directly. We have information on the home page of how to do that. Just go to click on Detroit.com. Ukraine's president says they may be entering a brutal new phase of the war with Russian troops taking aim at the east side of the country. Ukrainian officials say more than 10,000 civilians have likely been killed in the port city of Mariupol. This is new drone video showing the ruins of a theater in the city there where a Russian attack killed hundreds. Satellite images now show hundreds of military vehicles moving toward a city in the northeast part of the country. Ukraine's president tells CBS News his people need bigger, better help and fast. All depends on how fast we will be helped by the United States. To be honest, whether we will be able to survive depends on this. Russia has appointed a new general to take over operations in Ukraine. The U.S. says he has a record of brutality against civilians. A UPS driver is robbed in broad daylight in Detroit, and it was all caught on camera. This happened when the UPS driver was delivering a package last month on Freeland near 8 Mile and the Schaefer Highway on the city's west side. The video here, take a look, it shows a man run up, pull out a weapon. The man takes the package, then gets away in a blue sedan. You can see it here. No one was hurt. If you know who the man is or recognize the car, call police.